If you will, John 3, verses 17 to 21 is what we're going to read. Right after John 3, 16, Jesus follows up with these verses. John 3, 17 to 21 says this, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Hmm. So He come to save the world. Verse 18, He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved or exposed. Verse 21, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be, may be, may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now, maybe. Now, what is he saying here? Maybe. They will be. Amen? They absolutely will be. And that's what he's talking about. They will be made right. Now, we know that there are many religions in the world today. And we're focusing on our faith today. I do not call what we believe a religion. I call it Christianity. We have found God. Right. God has found us. Amen. It's not a religion. We're not trying to find God. And that's basically what a religion is. We teach Savior. We teach rescue. We don't teach religion in this church. Now, I want to go back and reflect on why we believe what we believe. What does the Bible say about what we believe? And there are so many religions that say, yes, this is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible says, but today we're going to look at what the Bible really says versus what they say it says. Amen. Today, we are on the right track. Glory Land, Baptist Church, you are on the right track. There are many millions of Christians across the world today that are on the right track. But on the same term, there's also many millions who call themselves Christians <coughs> that are not on the right track. That's right. Let me tell you why we are on the right track. In Genesis 3, verse 5, we read two weeks ago, a Savior for all mankind would come by only a woman's seed. Basically, a virgin. There would be no father involved. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. This goes all the way to the beginning, if you will. God had a plan all the way from the beginning. Now, if He started His plan there, and He carried His plan out, and even today that plan is being carried out, then He must be the Supreme God. He must be That's able right. to stop all opposition that would try to stop His plan. Right. And He has made clear today that His plan has evolved. It has come to a point. Amen. Now, that first tells me that we are in the right direction. <laughs> we have the right faith. It's not a religion. We have already found what God has already done. Amen. Now, we read from the line of Eve, if you will, to David, to Mary the Virgin, came Jesus, came Jesus Christ. Just as Genesis 3, 5 said it would happen, it happened. But then, last week we read in Isaiah 9, 7, it prophesied it would be God that would come through the woman's seed. God that would come through the woman's seed to continue David's lineage. To continue David's lineage. Now, if you will, and you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, go to Isaiah 9, and we're going to read verses 6 and 7, just as a refresher. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7 says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now watch the words here. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon His kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Did you notice what He said here? Did you notice this? Now, God in Isaiah 9, 6 stated that He inspiring Isaiah to say it, okay, that he would come as a child. He would come as a child born of a virgin, okay? Once he become this child, he would become this king, this prince of peace. Now, that tells us 
that this has to be of the woman's seed. The virgin. Okay? So we're connecting the dots, so to speak. Okay? We're going in a direction to prove what we have is correct and what is true. I don't like to hear Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons or even Muslims say Merry Christmas. I don't like to hear it. Simply because you don't believe it. You don't believe it. Today, we're going to establish why we believe what we believe and how that you also can believe it. And how that you can bring it to be a part of your life. And why it's right and you're wrong. Why it's right and you're wrong. Now, Isaiah 9, 6 stated the child would be the everlasting father. Who is the everlasting father? That's God. God incarnate. Bringing us a clear understanding then in the New Testament that Jesus is our God. He is our God. Amen. Now, a lot of people have trouble with the Trinity. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormon, and Muslim. You have trouble with the Trinity. Now, even the Muslim says that Jesus was born of a virgin. Right. And you ask the average Muslim why and how Jesus was born of a Muslim? Why was he I mean why was he born of a virgin? They'll say, well, just God wanted it that way. No, there's more to it. Amen. And right. you know there is, and that's a question that you have not yet addressed or answered. Right. And it needs to be answered. Amen. Because right. it will bring you to a different understanding of what the Bible means. Amen. Now, it says that a, that a babe was going to have to come from a virgin seed. A woman, if you will. Only a virgin. And then, that babe was going to have to also be God. Be God. So God incarnate. God become a man. Not three gods. We don't worship three gods. That's right. We worship one God. The Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God with three purposes and three functions. To do what? Now most would ask, why would God want to be three parts? We're going to cover that today. But I hope that I have your attention there. I hope that I have your interest. And that you say, well if you're going to answer that question, then you're going to answer a question that nobody in my religion can or will answer. I promise you, I will answer it. I will answer it to your satisfaction and to God's satisfaction against what you believe. Against what you believe. If you do not believe in a trinity. Now, Jesus was born to die. Many will say at this point, how can God die? I'm going to cover that. We talked about this in the last couple weeks. Jesus was born to die. The one to crush, if you will, Satan's head. To crush Satan's head. He had to die to crush Satan's head. What was it Satan was wanting to do? He was wanting to bring sin into the world. Sin became our nature. We were born into it based on what he done to the first Adam. He brought sin into the world. This Adam received this sin. Every generation, every person that was born after this was a sinner. So why would Jesus then have to die because every man's a sinner? We're going to cover that too. In other words, when he crushed Satan's head, he was breaking the hold, if you will, that Satan has over on us. You see, what John said was, we were condemned already. Already. We're lost. We're lost. So Jesus had to bring the blow, if you will, to Satan's head that would stop that. What is the penalty of death? I don't know. The penalty of sin is death. Therefore, Jesus had to do what? He had to die to pay sin's penalty. Therefore, the woman's seed, the one born of a virgin, the one who is God, Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, had to die. Then how can God die and control the universe and then not go crazy? And not spin out of you know practicality, if you will. How? Can God do that? Only by becoming three parts. One part that's still in control. One part that's dying for your sin to crush the serpent's head. And one part that woos you to the Son. Amen. What is that third part? That's the Holy Spirit. Huh. 
Now, I got a question to those that do not believe. If, if you're going to make it to heaven, I have to ask the question, if there's no Trinity, how are you going to make it? If there's no Savior dying for your sin, crushing the serpent's head, how are you going to make it to heaven? Your answer would be, works. I will earn it. I will get there by my earning it. Hmm. The Bible tells us, regardless of what the answer to that is, and we'll address that, the Bible tells us that Jesus did come. And this is true. Jesus did come and stated in Genesis 3, He would. And He did. Okay? Then, in Isaiah 50 and Luke 2, it stated that He would come and that He would die. And He did. Now notice I'm going Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. Not just Old or New. Amen. I'm bringing them both together. And so, we can honestly say, according to what history has proven, yes, our price for sin was paid by Jesus Christ. I don't have to do more good works than bad works to even it out towards me being good. I don't have to do that because my sin price was paid and the serpent's head was crushed. That's right. It was crushed. God, three parts. One God, three parts. Now, my sin was paid. In other words, the Bible tells me that Jesus fulfilled what the Old Testament said would come. He fulfilled it. Okay? Jesus' earthly task, according to the Bible, His earthly task was finished. Was finished. In fact, Jesus said on the Bible, I mean, on the, uh, in the Bible, said, look, said, it is finished. What I've come to do, I've done. What I've come to do, I have done. So Jesus' task was over on this earth. But I got a question. Many say today that Jesus died. He finished what He was supposed to do and different religions, not talking about our faith. That Jesus come, He died, and it's over. It's through. But let me ask you a question as a born-again Christian this morning. Is our need from Him over? Jesus came to the earth. He died. He rose again the third day according to what we believe. Which meant then that Jesus had more to do in our behalf. Now if Jesus died and His earthly task was over, then we still have a problem. Amen. That's right. We still have a problem. What is that problem? Eternal life. Now, eternal life has to be fueled by something. It has to be fueled by something. In other words, can I die and live again? on my own power. No. Now, those that say that you have to work and earn your salvation, to work and earn your salvation, then what do you do after your salvation supposedly has been awarded to you because of your works? You say, well, God will just allow me to live forever. Fueled by what? Our need from Him obviously is not yet fulfilled. Our need is not fulfilled simply because there has to be a source to our eternal life. Now, just as Jesus represented us in death, Jesus represents us in eternal life. There is nothing that can cause us to go on in eternal life and to be holy in eternal life no more than it was when we were here on this earth. In other words, what made the change? What made the difference? What qualified us? What brought us to a place and I guess a point where we became holy? That we can deserve earn and sustain holiness throughout eternity mm -hmm. was it works that's ludicrous that's ludicrous to even believe to think to imagine that any way possibility fashion or form that you can become holy in your works why is that why is that because you always have evil thoughts you always have evil deeds am i right or wrong Amen. Amen. we do Amen. so therefore we cannot be holy Something had to make us holy to qualify us to be holy, to live as holy forever and ever and ever. Jesus is that life. 
And there is no other source to that life of holiness other than Jesus Christ. If you've got your Bibles, turn to Revelation 1, verses 17 to 18. Revelation 1, verses 17 to 18. says this, and it's a shame that we're not recording because Jehovah Witnesses, I think you would have liked this. Okay? Revelation 1, again, verses 17 and 18 says this, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Now let's get the picture here. Here's John, and he's terrified, and he's scared. He's seeing all these things go on that are supernatural, that he can't explain. And he has a problem with them. He don't know whether to run, he don't know whether to sit there, he don't know what to do. And it says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He sees Christ. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. But watch this. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So Jesus has the keys of eternal life because he has conquered death. Amen. How can you go and have eternal life in your sin? Because sin's penalty is what? Death. He has the keys to death. He has the keys to hell, which is separation from God. The penalty, if you will. <clears throat> Therefore, showing us that, folks, it's not of our works. Mm -hmm. It's not. Lovingly, lovingly, to, lovingly today, I say to anyone who has not put their full faith in Jesus as God incarnate, death and separation from God is yours. If you have not put your full faith in Jesus Christ, being part of the Trinity of the one God, then death and separation from God is yours. Mm -hmm. You have nothing else to inherit. That's right. You have nothing else coming after death but hell and separation from God. Amen. Yes. Hell and separation from God. According to the Bible. According to the Bible. So then, in all boldness, I say, no is the answer to those who ask, don't we all believe in the same God? Mm -mm. The answer is no. That's right. If you do not believe in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of the one God, your God is Satan. Mm -hmm. He has tricked you. Yes. He has made things seem right that are wrong. He has reversed what you hope that you're doing to turn into bad, not good. Mm -hmm. He has reversed the process on you. And you've allowed Him to do it. Simply because you have not followed the Word of God. Right. Yeah. Okay? This Christmas season, we have reason to believe and evidence to prove that we are on the right track as born-again Christians. Mm -hmm. There is no season no time that you will ever be able to prove that if you do not believe in the Trinity, right. the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as being the one God. So, if you ask this question, don't we all believe in the same God? Your answer is no, we don't. That's right. To the Muslim, the Mormon, the Jehovah Witness, there is one God, and for us, the human person, the human being, if you will, mankind, if you will, it was necessary for this one God to have three parts to perform conquering our sin. Yeah. There is no other way that your sin can be conquered outside of what God has performed. Amen. It's not possible. You can't do it. Now let me go back and ask you this question again. Seriously. I said seriously. How can you ever work towards being holy? All joking aside, and all trying to prove this, prove that, all theologies, all these things. Seriously, how can you ever work to be holy? And only then will God accept you. So how can you work to become holy? If you have thoughts in your head and thoughts in your mind that are evil continuously, mm -hmm. how can you be holy? a sensible person would have to say, I can't. 
whether you're Mormon, Jehovah Witness, whether you're Muslim, no matter what you are, right. you would have to say, I can't. Yes. I can't. But if I do enough works, God will weigh them out and I will be okay. I gave you information on why this Bible, the King James, is the true Bible. And I took it all the way back to the beginning. The beginning of time. And then come along another New Testament of Jesus Christ called the Mormon's Bible. And then came along the Quran, Then the World Translation Bible, Jehovah Witnesses. And then come all these different things that added to what the Bible said. Now, if you have the, the, the position, the foundation, if you will, from the beginning, and you've added to it, or you've taken something out of it, do you have what was established? No. You have something different. And if the Bible was before all your literature that you have, then the Bible has been changed. The foundation has been changed. No one in these religions, no one, in Hinduism, no religion on this earth can date back their information further back than the Bible. Right. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible was first. Mm -hmm. And it set the foundation. Some brilliant leader of yours decided, I will add to it and take it away. Therefore, you are following that leader's ideas and not the Bible. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Muhammad, whether it's Joseph Smith, whether it's Brigham Young, no matter who it is. And as far as Hindus, you know that you don't even have a leader. There's no one leader right. that you can ever establish your belief, your religion back to. You are so mixed up and everything is so chaotic in Hinduism that you can't even date it back to any one person. Why? Because there have been so many changes over the years that nobody gets credit for anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to put your eternal soul into? That's what you want to believe? Folks, if the Bible said from the beginning that a virgin was going to have to give birth to a child, and it says in the Old Testament, that this child was going to be God. And it says in the New Testament that Jesus came and was the Son of God. Why do you believe what you believe? Mm -hmm. If the Bible was first, you've been fooled. You've been fooled. In fact, is you're wrong. Amen. And this Christmas season, with love, I tell you, you need to embrace the truth and stop going down these foolish tasks of these individuals. These things that they're trying to do to get you off center, to get you away from God. You need to embrace the truth that our sin is backed by the power of Satan. Did you hear me? That's right. mm -hmm. Our sin is backed by the power of of Satan. That's right. You cannot beat it. You can't do it. You can't be good enough and you can't refine yourself enough that you can be measured up to holiness because Satan is always pushing more and more sin into your life. Be it your thoughts, be it your deeds, be it whatever. It's a constant cycle. It's going on constantly all the time. And your power does not match the power of Satan. Amen. It took a loving for giving God to fix us. There is no other way. It's not possible to be fixed without God. Mm -hmm. So embrace the truth. Embrace faith in our God's design. Our God's design. The only design that could work our salvation. There was no other design. That's right. And it's not by works. Again, let me read John 3. Verses 17 to 21. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not 
is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved or exposed. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. His deeds are wrought in God. What does this word wrought mean? Manifest. Known. In God. In other words, what the Bible is saying is your deeds, your works don't mean anything to God until you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. So everything you're doing is in vain. Yes. Until you're born again in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what you do. Amen. Doesn't matter how good you are. Right. Doesn't matter how desperately you're working and knocking on doors and saying, I'm from the Watchtower organization. Okay. Or how many people you mm -hmm. go into a, uh, a coliseum and shoot and kill in the name of Allah. That's right. Right. It doesn't that's matter. Right. In fact, that's stupid. That's right. Amen. Amen. Why does God create Amen. something for you to kill? Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. You understand? Mm -hmm. You cannot get credit for anything you're doing until you're born again. Amen. Until you're a Christian. Amen. It's what the Bible says. And remember, the Bible was first. Mm -hmm. Everything else came after. Men didn't want to come to the light. They wanted to stay in their darkness. Yes. They wanted to stay in their darkness because they were evil and they didn't want to expose the darkness. Muhammad was evil. Joseph Smith was evil. Yes. John Russell was evil. That's right. Buddha was evil. Mm -hmm. Hinduism is evil. Yes. And a thousand other little things that have incorporated into these faiths and other faiths and stared away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. He was the seed to conquer sin. Yes. He was of the virgin. He was the one to come to deliver us from our sin's debt by his death, burials, and resurrection. Amen. And him alone. That's right. Him alone. I am the way, the truth, and the life, said Jesus. And it is absolutely correct. Amen. Amen. Folks, if it was first, and you know it was, it must be right. Because from the beginning, God had a plan. Amen. Up until this very day, that plan has not changed. That's right. Amen. The Quran has about three or four different versions now. You say, well, Brother Marty, don't the Bible? Nope. Nope. If you go back to Texas Receptus, the Prescheta, it all stays the same. That's right. Amen. It all stays the same. Oh yeah, you got some books calling themselves Bibles like NIV, ASV, and on right. and on and on. World Translations. Now the New Testament of Jesus Christ. They call themselves Bibles, but yeah, the devil's going to do something. He's going to lie and make it seem right. That's right. Amen. That's all Amen. that is. Yes. But we have the true Gospel yes. from the beginning. And it's not changed one bit. Amen. The Quran has several versions. Hinduism is so mixed up, they don't yes. even know what God they worship. That's right. I went to a house one time and they had a little monkey god sitting there and put almonds all around him. <laughs> don't know what that stood for. When I was working in the house, I just put a blanket over him. Didn't want him looking at me. I had a feeling them little monkey eyes was following me around the room. <laughs> I never did see him eat them almonds, so I don't know what the purpose of right. that was. I mean, are you really going to worship something like that? Right. When a Savior came to this world and died for you because yes. He loves you, because God wants to forgive you and separate you from your sin, you're going to put your faith in those things? Yeah. Think about it. And Muslims, I'm not politically correct. I don't care. I'm going to tell you the truth. You're going to hell. Right. right. Muhammad will send you to hell, and Muhammad was a fool. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he was of the devil. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And folks, so was Joseph Smith. That's right. Brigham Young. Yep. They were of the devil. Yep. Amen. 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 Buddha Amen. was of the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. God Himself incarnate. Amen. And you ain't gonna get no better than that. Amen. Amen. You can go with these prophets of this and these yeah. prophets of that. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible was first. It proved what God wanted, His design, and you cannot improve upon it.
this Christmas season. Where are you going in your religion? Where are you going to get to by what you believe? Well, I'm going to go kill a bunch of people and be looked at as a martyr and have 72 virgins. And then what? Do you really think God creates something for you to murder? Right. Amen. Amen. And do you really think that is a good, kind God? That He would create something for you to murder? Right. Well, that sounds more like the devil, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. That sounds more like hate, mm -hmm. evil, That's wicked. Right. You mean God's not strong enough to make and create something that is submissive to Him? He has to have you go out and kill it? Right. God can make anybody submissive. Anybody. All He's got to do is show up. Amen. And I promise you, they'll fall to their knees. He don't need you to go out there with an AK-47 and blow their heads off. Mm. Stop being foolish. Stop being foolish. Our work can only be seen of God when we are born again. And I promise you, when you're born again, you're not going to see things in the same way that you saw them before you were born again. Amen. That's right. You're going to see things differently. And the Holy Spirit's going to lead you and guide you and direct you. Thus allowing us to conquer Satan in his works and his deeds and what he's doing and what he's trying to accomplish across this world. Your religions are just a part of it. Christ is the conquering seed. It destroys it. Verse 18 makes it clear. Until we receive Christ, we're condemned already. Until we receive Christ, we're condemned already. It doesn't say until you're a Mormon or a Muslim That's right. or Jehovah's Witness or believe in Hinduism or Buddhism. It says until you become born again, you're condemned already. That's right. Amen. Again, the Bible was first. And all your literature came after the Bible. Mm -hmm. Was God late in your religion? Did He show up late to give you the information? Not if He's omnipotent. God was right on time from the beginning. Amen. And from there on, we knew the direction. We knew what to do. And you cannot date any of your information back further than the Bible. You see, Jesus did deliver the fatal blow. The fatal blow. John chapter 19, verse 30 says this. And I want, to catch, I want you to catch something. It says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, hmm, He said, It is finished. And He bowed His head and gave up the ghost. You know what I equate the vinegar with? Sinfulness. Sinfulness. Vinegar. I, I don't want to chug a lug a gallon of vinegar down. I just don't want to do it. It's a horrible taste. And I equate it with sinfulness. And when He received sin upon Him, He gave up the ghost. He died. He paid your sin's price. But He rose again to represent Amen. you in life for eternity. <laughs> How many of you can say your religion offers you that? None of you. None of you. Jesus delivered the fatal blow. Question. Should He apply it to your sin? You decide. Mm -hmm. God gave you the right. You decide. Either you'll receive Christ and you will be made holy as He is holy, or you will die and go to hell. And that's the ups and downs, and that's the ifs and ands and buts about it. There's nothing more. Nothing more. Today, you have a choice, but you have a logical choice. You don't have to read a bunch of literature you don't have to be brainwashed into believing something that came along after God's plan. You have the truth to make a choice to receive Christ or not. And if you don't, 
Folks, there is no hope for you. No matter what you believe, there's no hope. Let's